Hey, everybody, and welcome to episode 27 of Facts on the Ground. My name is Misty Winston, and I am joined, as always, by my co-host, Jesse Zerowell. Um, today, we're really excited. We have a, a very cool guest, one of my favorite people in independent media. Um, we have Fiorella Isabel, the host of Convo Couch. Fee, how are you? Good. I'm great. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for joining us. So um, before we dig into um, a lot of the... Uh, meat of election integrity and stuff, um, which I'm really excited to talk to you about. I want you put out a video yesterday that I wanted to ask you about because I think it's really important um, that this conversation be had, especially on the left. Um, but you did a video yesterday talking about why you criticize Democrats more than you do Republicans. Do you want to just kind of give people like a brief synopsis of the, the, the kind of the things that you said in that video yesterday? Um, yeah, so I've been getting, um, not just me, but a lot of us on the left who have been really talking about election integrity, which is very few of us who have been talking about free speech and censorship, who have been questioning the state narrative when it comes to, um, you know, privacy, things that people don't normally question, like foreign policy. A lot of us have, have been criticized for not going after Republicans as much as we do Democrats and even for going after progressives. Why don't you go after Republicans more, Fiorella? You need to stop going after the squad, et cetera. Um, and so in that video, I wanted to, to make uh, sure that people understood why I, I feel like it's important. And it's because the Democratic Party is a hindrance to actually any opposition to supposed to be your friends we're supposed to supposedly care for the people are the ones that disarm us from any sort of ammunition to actually go after the real issues we want like right now it's not the republican party that is impeding um you know that is going after us via silicon valley that's a lot of the the, the freaking democratic establishment has been working in tandem with Silicon Valley to censor people, has been working um, in tandem in the election issue. Now, a lot of people want to dismiss election fraud because it's Donald Trump. But as somebody that's followed election issues for uh, for years now, I it's the same thing that happened eight months ago, nine months ago to Sanders during the primary that happened to him in 2016 when he didn't say anything about it. And so now... Um, when, when I see the same thing and I see the reaction is different because, oh, it's Donald Trump and we hate Republicans. I, I think that the, the main enemy right now to combat is the Democratic Party because we will never be able to fully come together to combat the, the real issue, which is the, the top bottom issue like the people versus the the oligarchy, which includes, you know, the CIA, the security state and et cetera in the military industrial complex. We can't get there because people still believe that this party is better than the Republican Party. And in my opinion, it isn't. It's just a friendly, masked fascist face compared to the other one. It's the same uh, thing. And in fact, to me, it is more nefarious to for that the Democratic Party pretends that they're they're nicer. I think that requires a more a level of psycho. Uh, you know, level a different level of psychopath than somebody that's blatantly telling you, I am who I am. You know, I don't like, I don't like immigrants. I, I don't, I believe I support the police. I, you know, I'm okay with racism. This party right here pretends that they're actually on your side. And so people buy into it and they believe it. And therefore we're stripped of any way to actually fight what we need to fight. And that is exactly why I wanted to talk to you about this, because I experience the same thing all of the time. Um, people are constantly yelling at me because, you know, oh, you go after AOC too much. Why don't you attack Mitch McConnell? Or, you know, why are you attacking Bernie Sanders? Why don't you go after, you know, Lindsey Graham or whatever? And the, the problem is, is I think that a lot of people on the left either don't know their history or they um, are unaware of how to deal with it because the left always has to be wary of infiltrators. There are always going to be controlled oppositions. There are always going to be people sheepdogging um, you know, progressive people into a broken party. And that is something that we cannot ignore. And it's not possible for us to move forward unless we deal with that reality. And so, um, you know, everything that you said in that video, I absolutely agree with. I think that's a conversation that we need to have more often. Um, people on the left need to understand that, 
you know, yes, the Republicans are an enemy, obviously. They're generally horrible people. Uh, and I'm talking about in leadership. Republican people, normal people in the world, are not terrible people. They're propagandized. Um, but Republican leadership is hor horrendous. They're awful human beings. Um, but so are the Democrats. And the Democrats are the ones who are the gatekeepers for us on the left. They're the people we have to get through in order to, um, you know, kind of impose our will or, um, you know, get the things that we want accomplished, accomplished. Um, so I'm really grateful that you made that video. I'm glad that that's a conversation that we are having. I think we need to have it more. Um, you know, Republicans are a problem, but Democrats are an enemy that um, people are ignoring all too often, yeah. or um, maybe just not taking as seriously as they should be. Um, you know, they think that they can reform them because AOC and Bernie said that that was possible. So, um, it, and it's a very strange thing given that you have all these people who said that they were gonna push Biden left. Um, but then when you criticize Biden, they're like, why are you doing that? What are you doing? Why, do you love Trump? <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's really stupid. So yeah, I'm just, I just wanted, I wanted to just kind of touch on that video that you made yesterday. Everybody should go check it out. It's really good. Um, because I think that that's something, a conversation that we have been missing and that needs to be had desperately. Um, but you did also talk about, um, the, the election integrity, um, and how now that we see that it's Trump, who um, is Trump lost, so now suddenly our elections are perfect. Um, can you kind of talk about what that's been like dealing with that scenario? Because for me, I'm not an election integrity activist. I haven't, I mean, I follow it, I watch it, I watch your show, I love your work, you guys do amazing work on election integrity, but I'm not like in the trenches. And for me, it was really surreal to watch people on the left <laughs> suddenly pretending like our elections are, you know, grade A perfection and there's no questions to be asked and it, because and Donald it, Trump lost. That's a very was, strange thing. It wasn't just on the left either. John Bolton came out yeah. and said that the GOP should uh, basically lecture us uh, as to why the claims of election fraud are, are baseless. And that's just... I mean, the fact that John Bolton is still around and deferred. Well, he's a he's a resistance hero now. He's like a full yeah. pink pussy hat wearing resistance hero. Yeah, so. he's, he's he's like a Henry Kissinger in training. Like, I can't <laughs> believe this dude is still around. But um, yeah, anyway, to your question, Misty. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think I was just more um, um, curious what it's been like for you as a leftist to watch other leftist um, sort of enter this weird sphere of believing our elections are fabulous all the time. Right. Um, and just really quick to, to respond to his point too. Um, the reason Bolton is doing that is because this isn't a left right issue. This is an establishment versus the, the people issue. So there, those things, people are, are still kind of trying to understand that. Like we need to understand that like right now, because this, it's very clear right now what's happening. Um, and so as a leftist, it's been a very lonely uh, place to be in. It's very, it's been extremely like uh, disappointing and frustrating because even people that I normally, I'm like, oh, they're, they're, they're great journalists or they're doing a great job, completely dismiss this issue. Um, and I think it's not for lack of evidence as much as for lack of, of courage to actually pursue something that's going to get you so much, um, you know, so much like crap. Like people literally were like, messaging me saying I was a Trump supporter that I'm you know going becoming a right-wing grifter and all this crap because for simply questioning the results and for simply understanding the mathematics of it because it is like at the end of the day it's a statistical improbability what happened um and we bring in like actual software developers who say like, yes, our machines are easily hacked. They have been hacked before. We bring in people who have followed elections for decades and they're like, yeah, no, this is nothing new. This happens all the time. Um, and then we, you know, we bring in statisticians and, and people who know numbers who are like, yeah, this is not this. It, there's no such thing as a glitch. This doesn't happen. Like and and, you know, you have all these facts, all these people, but it doesn't matter because mainstream media is out there declaring, you know, de they declared Biden the winner before they should have. Mm -hmm. And they, they completely are just 
going on this trope like that this is all like fake news that this is a conspiracy theory they literally remind you the ap has called this race for joe biden in every video that that i basically have and um the progressive movement like I said in another video, it took it took the Democratic Party one election cycle to literally turn them into liberals, like because of Donald Trump, because of this Trump derangement syndrome that exists. Like they hate Donald Trump so much that I've had people I know in person tell me, oh, well, I don't care if they uh, if they even if that's true, because we needed to get Trump out. And I'm just like, what do you how, how do I don't know how to wrap my mind around that thinking, because it's like well, what's going to stop them from doing it to somebody you like next time? Like they just did eight months ago. And so yeah, it's this Trump, like Trump's hatred. This great anomaly in history that we yeah. dealt with before. Uh, no, that's not the case. Joe Biden is the same thing. He just happens to dress it up in, in nicer... Kind of. Rhetoric. Kind of, yeah, kind of. I mean, he's still kind of an asshole and he's still, oh, he's you a, know, insults people he's a, and... It, yeah you know but he's uncle joe so it's fine right um but you know you were talking about how democrats in one election cycle have managed to turn progressives into liberals and that has been very much with the aid of the squad and bernie sanders and yeah. all of these progressive people i mean as we were just talking about why we go after democrats more than republicans um aoc and rashida Tlaib and ilhan omar and bernie sanders they all used to talk about both democrats and republicans and how both of the parties were corrupt and completely out of line and out of control and now every tweet you see come from AOC or Bernie it's always about how awful the Republicans are mm -hmm. nobody's calling out Nancy Pelosi nobody's calling out uh, Chuck Schumer or the Democratic yeah. primary process or any of that stuff um, so you know it just it seems really weird to me that and these are um, people that I thought were in incredibly intelligent astute politically minded, nuanced thinking individuals, I smart never people. <laughs> what? I never did. Oh, uh, well, there are some, some of these people I did. Like there are some people that yeah. legitimately have kind of like broken my heart a little bit because, um, you know, they are unwilling to even um, consider the thought that the election might've been fucked up. And here's the thing, you guys. If the election took place in the United States of America, it was not a legitimate election. That's yeah. just it. That's it. Yeah. Period. Well, that, we I don't, don't have. We don't. We can't see uh, into the machines. We can't look into that. They're uh, not open source. They're owned by private corporations who are a subsidiary of another private corporation who are a subsidiary of another private corporation. You, you can try so hard to to look into them they will deny it every time and then there's the the issue of voter suppression that happens of course it happened during the primary with the long lines the faulty machines the people off the road voter rolls or the wrong people on the voter rolls it happens both ways and the um then there's the mainstream media element you know the manipulation of the media the calling it with two percent if it when it was hillary versus uh, uh bernie but waiting 99% reporting in Florida to call it for Donald Trump. I mean, it is it is everything. And then, of course, you have um, Silicon Valley, as Whitney Webb uh, pointed out, giving millions of dollars more to the Joe Biden campaign, um, you know, having given maybe like two million to Donald Trump's campaign. The vast majority of the money went to Joe Biden. You saw them all line up behind him, coddle him, manipulate what could go on Twitter, what could go on Facebook, what could go on Instagram and all these media giants. And, and it's really scary when you see how all these people are lining up behind Joe Biden. And to think that America, which the, the country that topples governments all over the world, that bombs whoever they want to bomb, coups whoever they want to coup, and extracts the, the resources from all these countries, is, is going to have a fair and free election is, uh, to me, moronic at this point, especially given the fact that so many people were on the left were crying about Bernie Sanders getting cheated and and it was still not enough people on the left by the way I, I remember so many people like uh, I think it was Kyle Kalinske and a few others like that dismissing election fraud saying this nah nah he lost because he you know blah 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 and Bernie Sanders campaign had a lot of issues you know I've definitely spoken about it at end like uh, just how his campaign was co-opted from the very top on the inside and how all these people ignored all the election issues. We tried to bring it to them and et cetera. So many people have tried before, but that wasn't enough um, 
to change the results the way they did. We outlined how Texas, how that drop was completely just not, it didn't make sense mathematically. And the, that's all we can do because we can't look into these machines. Now here we have a case with Raji Rob, who's going to try to take it to the Supreme Court again because he got pretty far. But every single time the Secretary of State is a Democrat, they're actually looking to make him um, something in the Biden administration. His name's Alex Padilla. Underneath him is Dean Logan, who uh, is the, the guy that oversees the elections. And all these people are corrupt. All these people are bought out. And so it's kind of like the progressives here know that election fraud is real. But half of them are even scared to do to say it because they don't want to be compared to Trump supporters. Um, but the, the thing is, we have to get past that, past that whole like, oh, Trumpers, this is nothing to do with Donald Trump for me. If it was the other way around, I would still be saying the same thing because it, we have been talking about this for for a while now. And this is this is about the fact that if we don't have fair and free elections, we're not going to be able to get people we want. There's a reason why we have people in power who don't support single payer, who, who don't support um, getting out of these disastrous wars. It's not the vast majority of Americans support it. How the hell did we get people in there who don't? And the fact is that we don't have democracy in this country and people need to come to terms with it because we took the guy who was in fifth place and now he's the president uh, or presidential uh, nominee, the elected president elect and then we have the vp who couldn't win her own state because she's so hated by the vast majority of her people and who got eviscerated by somebody like tulsi gabbard just simply pointing out her record and she, she came out to be the vp and she's likely to be the president because joe biden isn't gonna last so it's this crazy idiocy that we have going on in america and people need to wake up to it yeah and i think oh sorry go ahead jesse i totally agree and i think um as I've pointed out on other shows and just in conversations with Misty that Chris Hedges speaks really well to this. Like this, what we're seeing now is symptomatic of an empire in decline. And uh, people, you know, a lot of people might be confused or not, I mean, not, not, not to say that they're stupid or they don't get it, but you know, it's, you know, they're still caught in that lesser of two evils uh, ideology. Yeah. And it's like, no, we don't need either of these people to lord over us. Both of these people are terrible people. They're war criminals. They're uh, rapists. Um, I mean, the litany of crimes they've committed goes on and on. And, um, but at the same time, there's, I agree with you, There's there's such a like, it's like an obsession to be against Trump. And, yeah. and if you call out, you know, the fact that there has been actual election fraud, it's like, oh, well, you're, you just. Don't. Nazi collaborator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that all the time. Yeah. It's unbelievably ridiculous. <laughs> Basically. And it's, uh, no, I've been saying, I've been saying this sort of to people I, I've had conversations with since uh, Trump was elected, but he's really realigned um, sort of the political dynamics uh, mm -hmm. in the country in that like you have journalists from the gray zone who do great work, but the only platform they can get is on Fox news. That's yeah, or RT. I mean, I was on RT not that long ago. It's not like CNN is going to have me on to talk about election integrity. That's the thing. And it's like, yeah, the, the conservative outlets will have a lot of the left of a lot of the, the you know, the decent, like, anti imperialist left on Tucker Carlson. Right. And it's like people are getting, you know, bashed for going on there for going on Joe Rogan. And it's like, well, what, what the hell? Like, who, they're not giving us a voice. So why not take it and, and you know, dispel a lot of the, the, the things that aren't true? Um, that in, argument in, always really pisses me off because um, it, I don't know how people expect to win anything or accomplish anything yeah. from within their little bubble. Um, if you want to change people's minds, you have to go talk to those people. And just dismissing half of the country as deplorable and, and irredeemable and racist and, um, you know, we can't talk to them. That is a losing strategy, especially yeah. when you consider that a vast majority of those people, while they may have some, you know, disgusting views on race or, you know, sexism or whatever, 
most of those people want a lot of the same things that you do. They want health care. They want to end wars. They want their civil liberties protected. They want the same things. And so, yeah, I'm not going to go out to lunch with them and I'm not going to, you know, go hang out at their house with them or whatever. But if they want to work with me on freeing Julian Assange, then that's okay. They're on my team for that issue. Um, you cannot isolate yourself into this little pure bubble where only, you know, the people who believe in all, 100% of the same things that I do can enter. Um, you're never going to get anywhere. And it's a very strange thing that people on the left have decided to do that you, this is it, this is our team. And if you don't believe in every, if you're not in complete lockstep, with what we think, then you're not allowed in. It's a very like mean girls, clicky kind of environment. And it's really bizarre. Um, and, you know, I think that this election integrity thing has really kind of exposed a lot of that because, you know, when Bernie was cheated, everybody on the left was talking about election integrity. It was a huge issue. Everybody cared about it. And either you care about election integrity all the time, or you don't care about it. That's it. You cannot just pick and choose when you want to have free and fair elections. That's okay. just not gonna work. Um, and do I think that Donald Trump, um, his claims are all right and accurate and uh, come from a good place and that he doesn't have ulterior motives? Of course not, he's a douche canoe. Like he is going to do whatever he can do to help himself, that's what he does. But there, it shouldn't be a controversial statement to mm. say that this election is uh, uh, you know, just complete crap. All of our elections are, all of them, every single yeah. one of them. I don't know why that has become such a um, hot button topic where now, I mean, and you get a ton of heat. Um, it's amazing to me how hard people go at you simply. And these are people who don't do what you do. They don't cover election integrity. They don't right. go to the meetings you go to, <laughs> the protests you go to. You guys have put in the fucking work. Yeah. Like you've put in the work. And these are people who have never even touched the subject and they're suddenly coming after you like you don't know what you're talking about um, because you actually care about election integrity all the time. Um, it, it, and it seems like a very strange thing that's happening on the left. Um, and I don't really know what that's about. I don't know where that's coming from. This, I'm going to attack you um, in, in throwing around that you're a, a, a right-wing grifter, a Nazi collaborator. Um, all you have to do is watch five seconds of Convo Couch to know that Fiorella is not a Nazi collaborator. <laughs> <laughs> She's I, not a right-winger. <laughs> not <laughs> <It's> even ridiculous. <laughs> you know, like that's seriously I think, ridiculous. I think part of it is this attitude that's been cultivated among this sort of new generation of so-called journalists, most of whom live in Brooklyn. Like Max has talked <laughs> about this a lot. And I hate, I cannot stand the Brooklyn left. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and it's, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just, you know, it's like loft journalism. They sit in their, their apartments and write or complain and tweet about stuff. And yeah, you know, yeah. <clears throat> then try to tell other people like, well, you live in New Jersey. Like I've been told this, I I was actually told this by a, um, what the hell is the company uh, or the the outfit that does the, um, supposedly does investigations, but they're owned by a video game, a former video game uh, developer. Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Uh, Black, fuck. I forget. But anyway, one of their like functionaries um, like came after me and he apparently he's based in Colorado and uh, he was telling me like I like you're in New Jersey. How can you like what expertise do you have to talk about? Oh Syria? And I'm like, what? You're right. There's like this elitism, um, yeah. actually, on the Brooklyn left. It, it's, it's, it's very similar to the neoliberal elitism, where it's like, oh, we're so smart, we're so intellectual, yet we can't see what's actually going on beneath the surface. We don't question the narrative. We're so smart and intellectual, we're going to read theory, but we're not really going to try to implement, implement it. We're going to instead vote for Joe Biden or instead pretend that the squad are going to save us. And so it's this idea of like completely ignoring foreign policy, completely ignoring anything that has to do 
with, um, you know, civil liberties and, and thinking that those concepts are, um, you know, that their version of foreign policy, which is a very, um, you know, white, European, westernized version of socialism, which isn't really socialism. Um, it depends on the, the boot being thrown down on the global south and those countries. And um, they don't talk about that. And, you know, it's like the Jacobin laugh, the, the mm. you know, the, the Sam Cedar types, those people. Like, it, it's really, it's crazy. And there's an element of authoritarianism to it. That's what people don't understand. And this is where the fear mongering that a lot of the right uh, use comes from this, ooh, commie, crazy socialist boogeyman. Uh, a lot of that comes from the, um, you know, the, the bad authoritarian types that existed in, in Russia, like Gorbachev and a few others that were not necessarily all bad, but they were far more authoritarian than, um, than you know, than I, for instance, would like to be. I, I tend to fall on the left. I'm not authoritarian. I'm the complete opposite of authoritarian. I believe in collectivism, which is completely different. And I believe in more of people having the, uh, you know, an anarchist type of view, but, you know, in a way that's still like, in not every man for himself, like everybody working together sort of thing. And that is completely opposite of somebody that believes in a very authoritarian thing of view of, of the left or communism or whatever it is. And they kind of have made it like this brand to like pretend they're such cool, like communists and socialists. You'll see like the, you know, the Vosh people, it's the same thing. Like they they like pretend like they know so much and that, that they're this and they go through their little books. And it's like, that's not how things work. You, you're not, the moment you don't include foreign policy and the moment you don't include free speech as, as part of that, you're basically wanting like to, to live it in a, the same state as like a, a right-wing fascist type, except that, what what do you have you have free you know you have abortion rights you have every the lgbtq people you have everybody be equal but equal under another type of authoritarianism and that's kind of what we're seeing with the identity politics too that's being pushed with the democratic party Kamala Harris and how she's the num the first vp female woman of color and how we have um um i think Haynes is her name um, who is going to be the overseer of the uh, foreign policy, uh, you know, uh, in the Biden administration, she's like going to be the director overseeing everything that's going on. And we've seen Biden's picks. I mean, these, these people are horrible, but because he's having a few women uh, who are ex-CIA operatives come into his administration, yay, it's so intersectional, it's so diverse. And what we have is intersectional uh, imperialism and fascism coming on and, and that's something that is far more dangerous because people they want to distract people with oh she's a woman of color this this look at all these people of color look at all these trans people nobody's saying that's not important that that we need to have diversity but we shouldn't be having diversity and sacrificing morality and sacrificing you know these really key issues like i i don't care who i don't think the people in the middle east care either who drops uh, bombs, if it's going to be a woman or if it's going to be a man, they're still going to suffer uh, under the same type of regime. Yeah. yeah. And I think that that's what makes that little meme of the, you know, the fighter jet, <laughs> you know, with the, uh, the rainbow, don't trespass on me for the Republicans and then the rainbow flag and the, you know, whatever else for the Democrats. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. And this identity politics thing, not only is it um, depressing, um, it's really dangerous. It's yeah. really dangerous to say, oh, well, look, policy doesn't matter. Um, if the person who is in charge is a woman or is a black person or is gay or whatever, I don't care. I mean, I want representation for everybody. I think people should have a seat at the table. Um, I think minorities should get a voice. I think that, you know, gay people should, you know, if it ain't about, or if it's about us, then it should include us. I'm totally on board with that, but it doesn't, um, mean you get to ignore policy. I mean, yeah. if that person is still going to be a corrupt corporate owned warmonger, what good does it do that they're gay? That doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. And it seems right. like policy is what's getting lost here. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, there's even just talking to people uh, whom I know are Democrats and like stridently, like stringently voted for Biden and like, I, I'm even talking about family members who, who just like 
we had a conversation, they lost their mind because I was pointing out matters of historical record about Biden yeah. like, um, that just, they don't look good. Uh, they're not good. And, but if you look at Biden's campaign, if you look at Bernie's campaign, if you look at most of the Democratic campaigns besides Tulsi Gabbard's, nobody really touches foreign policy. There's like a token gesture toward it. And especially with like Israel, Palestine, there's still this, it's like, oh, what's the, what's the consensus? Oh, it's still the two state solution. Okay, we'll go with that because that's safe. And, you know, we have to appease APAC and, and all the other. And if you don't say that, you get called anti-Semitic. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm just wondering if you can speak to that a little. Like, why is there this almost like dearth of foreign policy interest or knowledge uh, with the Democrats? Why do you think that's the case? Well, because uh, foreign policy, if we look at what foreign policy would do and, and, and an understanding of foreign policy would do, it would destroy the empire. And so, like, if people realize just how much connect how connected our foreign policy is to our domestic policy um they would not be able to manufacture consent the way they have been the mainstream media would be out of a job because they get completely funded by you know lockheed martin raytheon and all of these these mother motherfucking folks like they're the pieces of shit warmongers and they fund our media so it just tells you like how if they were honest about everything like if they were completely honest, then then people wouldn't really buy into this whole thing. And also, it's it, you can tell when people talk about foreign policy, when people bring up anything regarding the military industrial complex and the security state, what happens to them? They are smeared, they're maligned, they're pushed out. You could look at uh, Mike Ravel, how, the, how he was treated. You could look at how uh, Tulsi Gabbard was treated when she brought up those issues. Uh, mm -hmm. You could look at, at who was killed when they started talking about American imperialism. Everybody from Robert Kennedy to uh, JFK, to um, the activist in the uh, Black Panther Party, um, like Martin Fred Luther Hampton, King Malcolm Jr., X. Fred Hampton, yeah. Yeah, all these people. Like, uh, yeah, the list goes on and on. And so it's like, you, you could look at all these people and it's like, well, you know, eventually a lot of people, you know, you could mention Angela Davis back then, she was a hardcore, you know, activist. And now it's like, you know, she's become part of that because it's like, it like it weakens you people get tired of fighting and fighting and fighting that's really where the fight is the fight isn't like oh yeah we can give everyone medicare for all but we're still going to be bombing people abroad we're still going to be doing all these things and that's the difference between the anti-imperialist left i think and the um and the you know like ah it's i'm i'm cool with imperialism if i get health care for all and and they don't realize though that it, it's that machine that is always going to keep them down it's always going to keep them subservient to whatever they're given and they're given scraps most of the time so it is is the military industrial complex that is if i see somebody challenging that i'm like wow this person is awesome and i rarely ever see that and right now in congress we literally have nobody and the people that every now and then do challenge the military industrial complex are people on the right like um it's either massey or it's uh the what's his name um uh, matt G gates or gets or whatever gates, gates and then yeah. there's um uh the libertarian guy Rand uh, paul. Rand paul that's his name yeah I, I, yeah i mean i like ron paul a lot better than yes. Rand paul but like i mean it's it sucks that that's it that's where the challenge is coming from where is the left on the anti-imperialism and that's something they don't like to hear and i think that's why you see you see so many people scared to even have foreign policy on their on their page and when i look at candidates and i don't see anything about foreign policy that's it i'm done with you because i know you're not really going to challenge the system because that's how you really truly challenge the system when you talk about you know assange when you talk about free speech when you talk about foreign policy that's what they don't want you to talk about because those things kind of oversee everything else. And if you don't have those things, and if you don't talk about election integrity, which again, nobody really talks about, then what are you challenging? You're not challenging anything. You're just, you're kind of doing little challenges within the system, but you're not challenging the system itself. 
yeah and i think that that's a big problem right now with especially yeah. the progressives like aoc i mean yeah. i hate to keep harking back to her but she's a problem yeah um you know her green new deal is completely corporatized watered down nonsense that doesn't even address the military industrial complex which is by far the biggest cause of our environmental issues um it, that's not a question there's there's no debate there that is legit um and to not even mention it and then not only that uh, it it's, d doesn't even mention fracking not one time and then but now she wants to p try to call out joe biden on fracking well why isn't it in your bill alex like what where is it and so it's this it's this head fake i think a lot of the stuff that's going on right now within the progressive movement is that they are very it's very obama-esque they're very good at knowing the right words to say and um the right way to say them and the appropriate time to give a dramatic speech or you know the importance of a clapback tweet like they're very good at the marketing aspect of it um but they're not actually working towards progressivism they are 100 percent on board with at the establishment um you know they have been completely co-opted they've capitulated at every turn they have not really i mean if i'm wrong i would love to be proven wrong please show me show me one time where one of these progressives that everybody claims is going to change the world has actually stood up and fought back against a systematic issue not just you know talking about how donald trump is evil or republicans are mean when have they stood up to nancy pelosi when have they stood up to her about you know the plethora of issues she won't even bring medicare for all uh, to a floor vote um why aren't you calling that out that seems yeah. to be a problem and, yeah and it's it's you can easily go online and look at aoc's voting record and and find that the first vote she cast in favor of uh, uh, policy was was the continued funding and expansion of NATO in January 2019 when she took office. That was her first vote. That's, I don't know how much more militaristic you get than that, you know, voting for NATO, um, voting in favor of NATO, but it's continued since then and it's become, it's not even, it's like worse than identity politics it's like fashion politics you know you had you you had her um you know apparently going to the sit-in in, in pelosi's office and then how long was it afterward where she was on the cover of rolling stone with nancy pelosi and and the rest of the squad so it's it's com i think completely disingenuous and i think you're right to 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 compare it to obama because it's like it's like all the you're right it's all the right physical moves um you know far look in the eyes like you're some kind of i don't know cult of personality and um you call people folks and you do that well thing. i think um that that combo really couch Convo Couch did a video recently where they showed the speech AOC recently gave um, talking about how Joe Biden's administration is kind and decent or whatever. Yeah. And I think, uh, Fiorella, you actually made a good point in that video, too, because you said, you know, from somebody who doesn't who isn't as involved in politics as we are, somebody who's, you know, kind of removed from it a little bit, that speech probably looked great. Yeah. It probably yeah. sounded great. They're fighting. They're like, oh, look at this. They're actually fighting. They're standing up to Joe Biden. And, you know, they're going after him on, on the Screen New Deal thing. And they got $2 trillion. Like, wow. Um, but she didn't say anything specific in that speech about what they're actually doing. And I think that that's how they do it. They don't ever give a specific um, action that they're taking or bill that they're introducing or, you know, here's what I want. Um, I want Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Ilhan Omar or Bernie Sanders to say, hey guys, we want Medicare for all, right? Okay, so Wednesday at 7.30, we're gonna show up at the state houses in every state, everybody, if, if you want Medicare for all, show up there at your state house and protest. Yeah. And that's yeah. how you get shit done. They're not yeah. doing that. Why do you think that progressives are so um, easily manipulated by this uh, theater? Because progressives are easily manipulated by their emotions. A lot of progressives, and I don't mean to sound condescending, but I... It's like it's not just progressives. It's like the the left in general. Like whether you want to include the centrists or not, a lot of the neoliberalism 
has a way of manipulating people through their emotions. They did it with Donald Trump versus Biden. They they did it with Hillary Clinton versus uh, uh, Trump as well. Um, and the progressive movement has turned into that. I mean, AOC's speech is reminiscent of an Obama-esque type of speech where you're talking about, you know, uh, o- overcoming um, yeah, adversity. You're talking about pushing forward you're talking about bringing people together and all of these good things that sound great and make people feel good and make people feel like oh yay we're ready to fight but at the end of the day when you get down to the specifics nothing is getting done when you go look at the policy there is no policy when you go look at the opposition to the the status quo to the machine to the democrats to nancy pelosi there is no opposition it's just to keep people feeling that they're doing better than the Republicans, whereas they're doing the same thing as the Republicans. But people are believing that because she says this, then that's better. And they they use that to manipulate these people's emotions like, oh, well, since she's at least talking about it, it might happen. And that's how they keep stringing people along to sheep herd them back into the Democratic Party. And I believe AOC and the squad are basically that like they're used to to be to sheep herd people back in. And Bernie Sanders is absolutely 100 percent turned into that. Like he's like retorting CIA talking points about our elections, saying the same bullshit that the establishment is saying. And it's not that these people aren't smart enough to know what they're doing. There is something there, whether they're scared, whether they're tired of fighting, whatever it is, they're done actually opposing the 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 oligarchy they're done with it they're not they they've got it they're fine we like they're done they're not going to fight anymore in those terms to really really fight the system they're not going to and the system tends to corrupt people who who go in it aoc the squad they might have come in with great ideas but as soon as they were elected you saw the behavior Mm -hmm. change you saw how she she even shifted her uh communication with tulsi gabbard she had her off act um, and she was like, yeah, I can't work to work with you. The moment she gets in, oh, let's, let's, you know, smear her on impeachment because she voted present, which is something that I was a hundred percent for. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't, I, th- I think it was stupid to impeach Trump on those, on those things. You could have impeached him on a multitude of other things. And then, you know, on the whole election issue with the whole, uh, ballot harvesting, the way they attacked Tulsi Gabbard. It's not like, I don't think Tulsi Gabbard is perfect by any means. I actually voted for Bernie in the primary, but it's just like. I, the way that somebody who points out the election issues, who points out the security state, who, who is like talking about whistleblowers like Assange and Snowden, who is actually going after the military industrial complex in a lot of ways, more ways than anybody else that was running for president, is got completely smeared. And so I think that's what it is. Any sort of logical thinker that's an independent thinker is not liked by the sort of faux left, like the DSA type of left, because you're, you're not basing it on the truth is the truth, no matter who it's coming from, you're not basing the truth on how much you like somebody. Like the truth, if Donald Trump says something truthful, I'm going to say it's true. And people don't like that. And they don't like it because Donald Trump represents this sort of uh, figure that throws in their face the ugliness of America and they don't want to look at that. They don't want to come to terms with that fact because they want it beautified. They want to make themselves feel like it's different. Like that's why people loved Obama so much because even though he was the deporter in chief, fracker in chief, the guy who dropped so many bombs all over the, the world who took us from two to seven wars, even though he did all those things, none of that matters because he spoke well, he was polite, he was articulate, and because he made people feel good about themselves. Drone assassinated uh, Anwar al son who was 16, uh, an American citizen who was born in Colorado and supposedly the drone destroyed his body so much that he was only identifiable by a piece of his scalp that was left in the street Jeez. while he was sitting at a bazaar with That's your children. Nobel Peace Prize winner, everybody. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so ridiculous. And, and we have Netanyahu with a nomination. <laughs> I mean, yeah. this is a joke. Yeah. It really yeah. is a joke. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely yeah, a joke. It is. And um, I, do you think it's just laziness on the part of the, the people who declare themselves to be left or Democrat um, or denialism? Because yeah. I've talked to a lot of them and, and they're just like, I was literally told, well, it's just your opinion that 
Obama has supported <laughs> neo-Nazis in Ukraine, right? It's not a, it's a matter of historical record, but these, yeah. uh, there's so many people on the so-called left or so-called Democrats, they, they're, that's, that will be the response. Like, oh, that's just your opinion. Like that's, or that's right. I, I mean, Russian propaganda. I can't tell you how many times <laughs> I've gotten that, but um, like, what do you, what do you think is behind this sort of just unwillingness uh, to, to really see the facts as they are and to still like invest your faith in the democratic party. It's just, yeah, seems totally insane to me. But what, what's your opinion on that? I mean, I just think it's cognitive dissonance. I did a, a video the other day talking about that. Like it's definitely more, it's not, it's willful ignorance because if you think about it, if you, if you admit that everything is at what we say it is, which is like, we're talking about the truth here. If you admit the truth that this, we live in an empire, we, we live in an oligarchy, we are the bad guys. We are the ones that go all, all around the world, not spreading democracy like you've been told since you were a child, but actually dropping bombs, extracting resources, forcing people to uh, adopt the capitalist point of view that we want. And if they don't do that, we vilify them, we malign them, we force them to, if they don't rebel, we, we, you know, we, we put them under our control. And then if you start learning that everything you were taught that about history, how um, Christopher Columbus isn't this great guy that came in and became friends with the Native Americans, who was actually a murderer, a rapist, and he slaughtered all these people, and that, you know, there, the, the slave issue was... Um, slavery in America was never resolved, really. I mean, we, we, we put a lot of black Americans into prison and that's where they are right now. And, and now working people are becoming indentured servants uh, with this neo-feudalism. And if you start realizing that you don't have democracy in this country because you don't elect presidents, presidents are selected and you haven't had it for, for decades now that they kill whoever challenges the system or they assassinate them in a way where it's, it could be a character assassination as well. They completely write them off. And if you start seeing the truth about our media and how our media is controlled by very powerful people who have uh, stakes into who gets elected as a politician, the fact that everything is privatized that shouldn't be from our education system to our healthcare system, the fact that we don't have any, any free speech in this country, uh, at, like to a level of where it's becoming like literally big brother 1984 and you know we have it but it's controlled like we can't we like we see people getting left and right taking off of youtube people getting their their twitter taken down we saw what happened with joe biden and everything else like how we couldn't criticize him on twitter with a new york post article and you couldn't talk about certain things we're seeing this encroaching fascism and we're seeing, of course, the wealth disparity, right? That more uh, three people own more wealth than the bottom half of, of, of the working class. And, and nothing is getting done. Wages have been stagnant. And if you start realizing this and understand all of this together, uh, you, you, it's so much to accept. It's so hard to come to terms with the fact that nothing you thought was true is true. And like everything is falling apart. And we are not the good guys we thought we were, that we were taught we were, and that this isn't America the Great, America the Beautiful, that this isn't the country that is actually moving forward. We're actually moving backwards. That is very difficult to come to terms with. It's a psychological thing. And, and people would rather pretend that that's not true and would rather cling on to any hope that there is some sort of democracy or some ability to reform it then actually face the reality that we have a dying planet and we're a huge part of the reason why our planet is dying. And so um, I honestly think it's mostly cognitive dissonance. Uh, I, on the left, I think it's mostly cognitive dissonance. On the right, I think it's mostly um, misinformation, fear mongering, and um, a lot of fear, a lot of fear in general, because the, the things that they use to keep to get the right to fear communism and socialism are the same elements that the neoliberals use to get the, you know, the left to fear the, the right, and, and, you know, and everybody out there on the right as a deplorable, et cetera. It's this fear manipulation that we have. And of course, fear is a negative thing to come from. Like if you're operating from fear, you're always going to be reacting instead of, instead of acting and taking action. So. 
Yeah. yeah. And I, I've talked about that a lot on other shows, actually. When, when we are propagandized from birth in this country to think yeah. that we are, you know, the beacon on the hill. We are democracy and, you know, eagles and fireworks and we're the best. And when you realize that none of that is true and that everything that you were ever told is a lie and that the people that you trusted in your life, your teachers, your parents, your grandparents, your neighbors, they all lied to you. They didn't know they were lying. They were also propagandized, but that's a lot to take in. That's a lot yeah. of heavy issues to to really examine um your country the way it actually operates the things that they do in your name and to recognize um the situation that we find ourselves in i mean forget realizing that everything's a lie once you realize once you take in reality it's daunting we are up against a lot <laughs> I mean, this is not like a, an easy, quick fix. This is not going to be, we're not voting our way out of this. There's no amount of phone banking you can do. This is going to get ugly. And I hate to say that, but that's reality. It's going to get ugly. There's no way around it. Um, power is not going to just hand everything over willingly. It's going to have to be fought for. And I think that that's really scary for people. And to admit that that's the situation we're in is probably a really terrifying thing. But but I also have a big issue with people. And I, I mean, I say this all the time. I, I kind of forgive, I call them normies, people who, you know, maybe they watch, you know, 30 minutes of MSNBC or Fox News every night before bed or whatever. And they're, you know, they kind of know some things. And, right. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, they're not really involved. They don't follow it as deeply as we do. They're not, I get those people. Those people, um, they just don't know better. But people who we interact with and who we deal with on Twitter or on YouTube or whatever, those people should be able to recognize reality and to deal with it. And it's really frustrating for me, especially, and I, I hate saying it like this, but especially the left because, and maybe I was extremely naive, but you know, um, I've always been super left, I, but I've never been involved in electoral politics. I've always thought it was a joke. Um, and it turns out I was right. Um, <laughs> but when Bernie Sanders ran in 2016, I had been following him for a little while. Um, I kind of, I mean, I wasn't like a follower, but um, I had seen him on C-SPAN in 2003, giving Alan Greenspan the business, which was amazing. And so I kind of knew who he was and I thought, oh, okay, this guy, maybe, maybe he will actually put up a little bit of a fight. Maybe he can get some things done. And his run in 2016, it seemed like he was going to do that. And so I supported him and I voted for him and I, you know, volunteered and I phone banked and all of those things. And, um, you know, when you realize that he, there was never going to be a fight and that it was not, it, I think that's really hard for people, um, you know, to, to recognize that this, there is no, there's no, there's no quick fix. There's no easy fix. This is going to suck. <laughs> and, um, you know, the American empire is the wounded animal backed into a corner right now. And um, there's a lot of lashing out happening as we fail. I mean, this, the empire is falling. I mean, I've been saying this for years. Look around you. You are yeah. living within the death of the empire. That's happening around you right now. Um, yeah. It's historical and it's terrifying, but that's what's happening around you. And for Bernie Sanders to be put forward as some sort of beacon of progressivism is just preposterous. I mean, look at his voting record. He voted for the 1990. I always bring this up in conversations about Bernie Sanders because mostly people don't know, but it's also really important. He voted for the 1998 Iraq Liberation Act that, that was passed under Clinton, which basically continued sanctions, including daily bombings of, of Iraq. And it's and that was responsible for the death of half a million Iraqi children. And yeah. he has a very long and well-documented um, record of being an imperialist. And mm -hmm. I'm sorry, to me, you don't get to be on the left if you're an imperialist. Those right. two things don't go together. Um, but I know we're getting, we're running a little bit low on time. So I did want to ask you um, just um, kind of like selfishly, 
um, our channel is like a little baby channel. We just got started and whatever. Um, but I, one of the reasons why I hesitated ever to even do this is because I know how bad it sucks for women. And I see the heat that you take all the time <laughs> being a female in the media. And I think probably even more so because you're a woman of color. I think that that is just like double whammy. Um, but I find it interesting that every time Convo Couch gets any heat, it is almost always um, aim directly at you and pasta gets none of it and um, or less significantly less of it. Um, so can you talk about that? What is what has it been like for you over these past few years um, since the channel started um, being a woman in media and trying to navigate that space and in independent journalism? It's really interesting you say that because I didn't even realize how bad it was, the disparity uh, until this year in particular. Um, because it was, I was, I think I'm more like, he's sometimes more, I don't want to say, he's nicer sometimes when he says things. And so maybe I was like, maybe that's what it is. But I mean, I think it's definitely, there is a level of, even when um, people, you know, bring up Nico to me, they attack me too. And it's like, well, <laughs> like Nico's his own person, you know, and I, and half the time, the things they say to him too are so, uh, you know, like vile and awful. And it's, it's, it's really interesting that he is, of course, a black man in media that doesn't pay attention to the status quo uh, narrative and tries to go around it and tries to tell the truth. And so to me, it's really interesting that, um, you know, and I bring up Tulsi Gabbard because it feels the same way to me, like somebody that challenges the narrative and also is an independent thinker is never welcome. But when you put that as and you put in woman and then you put in person of color that does that, uh, the establishment and liberals and even the progressives hate it because if you don't fall right into what they want, they're going to attack you. It's like, how dare you come and speak your mind? You need to go back to your place. And the level of like savior worship in the progressive movement especially when it comes to white men i mean we see the you, it's just funny to me i see the the progressives talk about how they want equality and intersectional this and that and and you know and the, yeah women and all this stuff but who do they prop up the most it's a bunch of white guys i i'm so sorry there's nothing wrong with like white men of course so like my partner is, is a white man and he's awesome but it's just the fact that the level of like um just like they they fawn over these people they make these people the leaders and they they all happen to be a lot of white men and it's like when i see women in media if they don't fall into the the, the whole narrative and th if they don't sort of kind of give you a few wins here on the progressive side but then pretty much follow the establishment narrative they're maligned all the time i mean this is it's so it's so rare to see women in general on be even an in independent media to be out there and be outspoken and then of course it's even less to see women of color out there and so i think that's why there's that sort of like people don't realize it and a lot of the times i don't ever talk about this because the progressive movement and the left is just as guilty as the uh, establishment and the right when it comes to their sexism. They, they dismiss it as identity politics. And I'm not one to lead with identity politics. I'm not saying I should be propped up to this level of, of you know, uh, like pontification uh, because I'm a woman of color. But I am saying I should receive the same level of respect as everybody else. And that just doesn't happen. And you can see that. Like, you can see it. It takes two seconds, like, the, the way you said it yourself, to go on and see who all, all these attacks are coming at. Um, and it's the progressive movement and the left themselves have to come to terms with the sexism and the racism and all these things that they say they're above. They're not above at all. And it shows by their actions. They can say all these things, but when it comes to who they watch, who they support, et cetera, it's mostly, it's mostly you know, the same status quo type of, of people, if not the same type of gender. They value what a man says more than like what I say. If somebody messaged me, um, I think I, I spoke to you, Misty, about this, how like uh, somebody messaged me saying, oh, you should wait until uh, somebody like Greg Palace uh, uh, or, or somebody like uh, Aaron Matei covers the election issue because, you know, like th I'm like, excuse me, like, so I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. Wait for the, the white men to, 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 to tell me what I should know, even yeah. though I mean, even though, you know. Alice, for a lot of things, he he's he doesn't cover the same 
election integrity. We do. We cover like not just voter suppression. We're talking about the machines, the numbers, the vote by mail ballots, all of these things that that have happened. And we have people come on to talk about it, too. We know what we're talking about. So but again, that message was sent to me. It wasn't sent to pasta. So it's like, yeah, sit down, little girl. Like, so let let the, the men who know what they're talking about talk about it. So it, it is obnoxious, but I think the way we fight that is we have more women like you start start a podcast. We we have more women like you, you know, have these conversations and and not just be clicky about it because a lot of the indie, independent media left, the blue check mark independent media left is so clickish. They never have a like people like you or Ion or, you know, like uh, they, they're very cliquish. And it's interesting to me how that's developed, that elitism that you supposedly progressives hate so much has developed so much in independent media. Yeah. I think that's a pervasive problem on the progressive left period. Um, over the past four years, we have watched these people turn into the very thing they claim to hate. Yep. Four years ago. Um, four years ago, they were railing against the establishment and they were railing against all of these things. And they're now out there regurgitating those exact same talking points and those exact same viewpoints. And it's really depressing to watch in real time. Um, and I know that I've talked to a lot of other women who have considered, you know, starting a show or being on shows or I mean, I've spoken, I hope she doesn't mind me saying this, but I spoke to Caitlin Johnstone and she, uh, she stopped doing on camera interviews and appearances because she gets shit on um they uh make fun of her appearance and they you know talk about all that and that's it's it's absurd to me men don't deal with that i mean it's it's not you know um it, that's not something that, that anybody cares about with a dude nobody talks about chris hedge's appearance <laughs> nobody right. cares you know yeah. and and caitlin's one of the uh you know best voices i think on the left she's you know a great um analyst and she's 100%. really um intuitive and intelligent and insightful and it, she gets shit on because she's a woman and you know it's it's just really depressing to me um you know you would think that the left would be better than that we have definitely been shown that that's not the case um there is definitely a sense of elitism and um it's it's very exclusive you can only be in the it's it, it, i mean like jimmy Dore says about mainstream media it's a club and um it's very bizarre to me to see um especially given that i'm a free speech activist and seeing you know people shut other voices out um it's it's really kind of disturbing um so yeah um i know we're running a little short on time so if you just want to tell people um where they can find convo couch where they can find you on twitter all of those good things and just maybe give us some final thoughts or whatever uh that would be great yeah so you guys can find convo couch on youtube the convo couch we also have uh we're also on facebook under the convo couch and instagram and twitter as well under the convo couch you can find me on twitter at fiorella underscore i am and uh, just, you know, we, we really need to start realizing that this divide that we have is between the people and of the working class and then, of course, the, the elites, the oligarchs. And this is uh, not just a, a U.S. issue, but we, we should start dealing with our own country first. Um, but it's a world issue right now. Like the, the way we affect what goes on in the world is really telling, especially during this pandemic. We should be angry that we haven't gotten anything more than a $1,200 stimulus check, if that, and that there's closing down more businesses where people work and now those businesses are going to go under and that corporations are going to take over. We should be ready and willing to go out and, and protest and you should push people like the squad to who have, uh, you know, the, the power and the following and all of these abilities to use the power of the people to enact change and they're not using that. So it's so important to really go after these people because they're the ones that are supposed to be progressive progressive the beacon of progressivism and if they're not then you have to point that out because they're only getting in our way so yeah thank you guys well for said. having me on appreciate it yeah, yeah thank you, so thank you for, for being me. here yep uh, uh i really appreciate you being here and taking the time um and uh everybody should go check out convo couch it's one of my favorite shows i don't think i've missed um a video in <laughs> a long time um i never get to watch anybody live because it's my kids are always crazy or whatever but i never miss a video so everybody should go check out convo couch and I say this all the time, support independent media for yes. the love of God, support independent media. If you cannot donate, I get it. Everybody is in a shit place financially right now. Yeah. Um, share 
the hell out of independent media. Get those voices out there because that is the only way we are going to be able to combat this thing. We have to be able to get information out and to have access to that information and be able to, um, you know, hear other voices and different opinions and different viewpoints and all of those things. So please support independent media. Um, but yeah, thank you to Fiorella for being our guest today. Thank you to my co-host, Jesse. Um, and you guys can find Facts on the Ground, obviously, on YouTube. You're probably watching right now there, obviously. Um, we do also have a, a Twitter page, which is FOTG Podcast. Um, and then you can find me at Sarcasm Stardust. Jesse is at Jesse Zerowell. And thank you guys for being here. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.